Um, I'm Abdel Aziz Hamdan. Today I'm going to introduce uh, efficient numerical simulation of symmetric liquidity crystals. This work is joined with uh, Patrick Farrell and uh, my uh, PhD supervisor, Scott McLachlan. Okay. So I'm going to start with uh, an introduction about liquidity crystals. So liquidity crystals are substances with uh, intermediate properties between liquids and um, solid crystals. For example, they can flow like liquids while its molecules are oriented in a crystal-like manner. Um, according to their phases, they can be classified into uh, nematic, smictic, and holistic liquid crystals. These are the shapes of... Uh, so, starting from A, this is nematic, smictic, smictic, and holistic. We have two types of smictic, uh, smictic A and smictic C. I'm going to uh, um, explain the difference between them later, but uh, for now imagine that we have a solid crystal on the right, and if we decrease the temperature, then we will get uh, holistic liquid crystals. Increase the temperature more, we get smictic C. Increase the temperature, we get smictic A. And finally, uh, nematic liquid crystals, and increase the temperature more and more, we will get uh, a liquid. Um, these are some details about smictic liquid crystals. They have well formed layers with the crystal pointing in the same direction. Um, the type of the smictic liquid crystal determined by the molecule arrangement with each layer. In smictic A, we have molecules oriented along the normal direction, so uh, these are the layers, and the molecules point to the normal direction. In smictic C, we have a tilted angle, like this, again, these are the layers, and we have, like, an angle. And now, uh, modeling smictic A liquid crystals, I'm going to start with the PSS model, where uh, they introduced the energy in terms of U and nu, where U is the variation in the density of the liquid crystal from its average in, uh, density. <coughs> And uh, nu is a unit length vector called the director field. And the constants A1, A2, A3, B, Q, and K are uh, constants determined by the liquid crystal under consideration. Uh, recently, uh, Shad Al proposed um, a model adapting the PSS model, making use of um, uh, tensor valued order parameter. So rather, uh, instead of the uh, uh, director field, they used uh, a tensor, where this, uh, this tensor is a symmetric traces tensor valued order parameter. And they also added the function f, where f is equal to this function. f is chosen so its minimizer, the minimizer of its integral is of the form nu outer nu minus uh, i2 over 2. Um, in that paper, they used what's called uh, over-penalized C0 interior penalty method, where, uh, where they ignore the consistency term, the term that comes from the element-wise integration by parts, and add uh, the jump, the last term. And uh, because they uh, used, ignored the consistency term, they use a large um, in, uh, penalty term, like one uh, big O of one over h to the power three, and uh, these are the standard jumps in the uh, gradient, in the normal component of the gradient. In their discretization, they used uh, uh, UHN CGK plus one, where k is greater than or equal to two, and also they used uh, uh, QH in CGK squared. CGK squared because uh, Q is a symmetric trace list, so it has the form Q1, Q2 minus Q1, Q2, Q2 minus Q1. So we have only two functions. And this, uh, uh, this notation denotes the standard jump in each edge, and its own edge is the uh, set of edges. Uh, usually, this, uh, developing solvers uh, for uh, this discretization is hard. And therefore, we are trying about uh, developing different discretizations. Uh, 
Um, so in our work, we developed two uh, discretizations. The first one is the non-symmetric interior penalty method, and the second one is uh, the mixed formulation. In the non-symmetric interior penalty method, we have to solve for this nonlinear system. So we take uh, the gatex derivative of the energy E uh, with respect to UH in the direction of at this function PH. And also we take the derivative of the energy E with respect to Q in the direction of at this function uh, TH. Uh, VH and TH are in CGK plus one and CGK um, again. For the tensor, we have a vector of two functions. We also add uh, the, term, uh, the terms J, where this term comes from the element-wise integ uh, integration by parts. It's called the consistency term. The second term called the symmetry term. In symmetric interior penalty methods, this term should have the same sign. But we are using non-symmetric, so we change the sign here. And for this one, when we try to prove coercivity condition, these two terms vanish. So we need a smaller penalty term here. That's the idea of non-symmetric. So we use a smaller term here. And again, these are the standard jump in the uh, normal component of the gradient. In the second discretization, we applied mixed finite element formulations. So we started by saying, okay, let's assume that V is equal to grad E, uh, grad U, and we enforce this by a Lagrange multiplier alpha. So we have to add the term alpha dot V minus grad U. Using the integration by parts, with the suitable boundary conditions, we have alpha dot V plus U div alpha. In the energy, we replace the, the Hessian by grad V. And then we have to uh, solve this uh, saddle, uh, to solve this form for the saddle points. Uh, these are the spaces we, uh, we solve in, and we could prove that the, uh, the F sub condition for this problem is satisfied. And now at the discrete level, we solve this nonlinear system. These are the first order optimality conditions. Uh, with respect to some test functions. As a, discrete, as a discrete level, we use DGK, CGK plus two, CGK plus one, RTK plus one, as, a sub as conforming discretization of L2, H1, H1, and uh, the Rabier Thomas space. And again, at the discrete level, we could prove that uh, this discretization is in so, uh, stable. We have uh, to apply Newton's method because the problem is nonlinear. And at each Newton step, we have to solve a linear saddle point problem. Okay, so we are going to use the Newton method to linearize. Now we have to try to solve the uh, linear system that arises from both discretizations. Um, so we are going to develop uh, monolithic multigrid preconditionals where we use standard V cycles with a direct solve at the coarsest level, which is taken to be 1 over 32, and coarsening to a factor 2 uh, between all grids. We use these cycles um, as preconditioners for FGM grids. As a relaxation scheme, we may use uh, the additive uh, form of Vanker relaxation with the star patch around each vertex. Uh, these are the typical uh, uh, vertex star patches for both the non-symmetric interior penalty discretization and the mixed formulations uh, when UH, QH are in CG3, CG2 and UH, VH, QH, alpha H are in DG1. CG3 square, CG2, and uh, RT2, and uh, the colors are consistent. For example, uh, UH and DG1 in red, so the red degrees of freedom represent uh, UH, and similarly for uh, all other variables. I would like to point out that QH is in CG square. It's a typo here, and VH uh, is also in CG3 squared, so one 
black circle represents a degree, uh, a vector of degrees of freedom, like it represents uh, two degrees of freedom. The green cir uh, circles also, uh, each one represents two degrees of freedom. Uh, finally, rather than using the stationary iteration, we use the three uh, steps of GM risk preconditioned by the Schwartz uh, method as pre and post relaxation in the multi grid V uh, cycle. Um, final numerical experiments we are going to consider the uh, square from minus 1 to 1, 0 to 2, and the constants in the energy are chosen here. Uh, we apply directly to boundary conditions. Um, on the field sort of Q. So on Y equals zero, we implement this boundary condition. And when on the other side, we uh, apply that boundary condition. Uh, for this boundary condition, it corresponds to a vector field of the, to a vector of unit one, length one, points to the uh, positive X axis. And uh, on all other sides, its uh, unit length corresponds to the positive y-axis. And now, at final bits, we found out that the problem is kind of hard to solve in a small number of Newton iterations. We need at least from 35 to 60, and sometimes even more which takes a very long time. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, just about the stepping criteria, we used 10 to the power minus 8 residuals, and for the uh, linear cri stepping criteria, we used Eisen, uh, Eisenstadt Walker stepping criteria. And yeah, now, at final events, we know that we need too many Newton iterations, which, which is very expensive. So therefore, we decided to apply uh, nested iteration. So what we did is starting with a Corsi grid, which is H1 over 32, solve exactly using exact solver, Newton LU, use the solution as interpolate a solution to the next level, use it as an initial guess for the problem, and so on. So again, we solve at H equals uh, 32 and fixed initial guess, interpolate the solution, use it as, initi as an initial guess in the next final level and keep going. And now here are the results. So uh, above table shows results for uh, non-symmetric uh, interior penalty method and the uh, bottom uh, table shows uh, results for mixed finite element methods. And we have the, we compare Newton cryo of multigrid and Newton LU. We have here a number of Newton iterations and averaged monolithic multigrid uh, iterations. And we have the time in minutes here and there using, and we have the number of processors from four to 16. So we have, we have here uh, many observations. First of all, um, the trial of multigrid solver is efficient. So in both discretizations, we see the number of uh, iterations is almost fixed. Uh, but we see that uh, for mixed finite element methods, is a, it's a slightly uh, smaller. But also, we saw that uh, uh, non-symmetric interior penalty methods are faster. And we can explain that by saying the star patches that we solve are smaller, as we saw a uh, few slides before. And um, yeah, um, the dashes here mean that Newton LU couldn't solve at the level two to at the resolution two to the power nine because of the memory limitation. Um, also, we could finally see that Newton Kral of multigrid outperforms Newton LU, especially in non-symmetric interior penalty methods. So using 16 processors, we need 3.7 minutes, while we need eight minutes for uh, Newton uh, LU. Uh, Newton LU was more competitive with the mixed formulation, and we see uh, that Newton uh, multigrid is a slightly better 
at this level using 16 processors, but unfortunately, we ran out of memory, so we couldn't see if it's gonna be faster at the next level. And finally, the last observation is the uh, parallel scalability. So uh, from four to 16 processors, we could see about 3.8 or 3.7 times the speed up, but we saw only about 2 points from 2.6 to 2.7 for Newton LU. And uh, the problem has multiple, solu uh, multiple solutions, so we uh, noticed that uh, changing the initial guess can change the solution. These are three solutions generated by varying the initial guess at the, the, at the course level. And final conclusions and future work, so we, are, uh, we applied mixed finite element formulations and non-symmetric interior penalty methods to find extremizers of smictic A energy functionals. We developed nested iteration Newton trial of multigrade solver. For future work, we are going to extend our work to, three, uh, to 3D and apply def uh, deflation techniques to discover multiple solutions. And thank you. problem. Uh, this term is the reason. Like we have a kind of Helmholtz um, shift and Q is 30 so the shift is a bit large. So I think this is the reason why why did we need so more iterations. Can you resolve the, uh, the, sort of the Green's function Sorry? Is, is it because you need to resolve some rapid? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So when uh, I when we took like small q, um, it was like five, seven Newton iterations for q equals three, five. But when q is thirty, we need too many Newton iterations. So this is what I noticed. So I think this Helmholtz shift is the reason for that observation. Two questions. The first one is, since you're doing 2D, why in the main problem your dissertation come out of aligning this method, so essentially from this term involving the action of the mapping parameter and the, the Q tensor, you want to focus on how aligning this group. Why not using that guidance for a C1 conforming discretization that? Um, C1? Um, okay, yeah. Um, uh, for, you mean uh, Argyris elements, for example? Yeah. Um, first of all, they are not they are unavailable in 3D in FireDirect. This is the first reason, and the second reason they are polynomials of degree nine, which I think is inefficient. I need too many degrees of freedom. But so it's you can construct with a construct lower or the C1 conforming discretization of specific splits, or you can do other things. You can, for example, switch right. the virtual element. What's that? You can switch to virtual elements if you want. <laughs> and you have all the conformity that you need. Which elements? Virtual elements. Yeah, where's, where's your virtual element framework that's going to do that for you? <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, and the second question is you are essentially you're introducing the, the Q tensor, right? Which is Landau, the Gens theory, to uh, model for line discontinuities because they point with discontinuities are already exactly. in the solution because they're in H1. But then the fact that the simulation that you show at the end do not include any type of line discontinuities. So can you actually see line discontinuities? Um, you have any, so in the, last, in the last slide that you showed me, you have a beautiful picture, which is the typical test case for these kinds of things, which is the one where you have no, okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Where you have two points singularities, right? But can you actually have you find out any solution where you have line discontinuities? 
Um, well, that's why we have to use deflation. So, because from the initial cases we are using, this is, these are the solutions we could obtain, but yeah, the next step is applying deflation techniques. Uh, one more point about C1 elements. Um, right now, even in 3D, they are kind of fine because we are using full Neumann boundary conditions, but if at some point we need to use um, directed boundary conditions, then we need to apply like Nietzsche terms and weak enforce, enforcement of directed boundary conditions and it's almost the same issues we have with C0 interior penalty methods. So this, because it's very hard to apply directed boundary conditions with Argyris elements, we need but to use can, some weak you enforcement. Can you can use, for example, this web, which is non-conforming, but C1, uh, this is as well C1 in 3D. Actually, I gave her meat elements a try, but for some reason I didn't keep pushing in that in that direction. I don't know why. I don't remember why, but yeah, we tried her yeah. meat elements. Well, Kerry, you didn't implement the Sumu element that we tried out. Yeah. In 2D, that's right, yes. And in 3D, also, there's the minimal, they prove that that's the minimal polynomial that they I think we have to wrap up. Uh, let's start this speak again.